Uh, what? Blender 4.2 LTS? Did that change? Frenzy. Um, I thought it was 4.3 that was going to be LTS. I thought they were doing like 3 and then 6 and then... What? I'm... I'm so confused. Yeah, see, look, we've got 2.93 LTS, 3.3 LTS, 3.6 LTS. What is up with this one? All right, where's our timelines? Do we have a timeline? Ah, oh, here we go. At least branch. LTS, okay, here we go. Yeah, see, look, we've got 2.83, then we've got 2.93. I don't get it. I wasn't expecting this. I mean, don't get me wrong, that's awesome. We have an LTS already i just thought i had a little bit more time anyway i hear there are updates for the vsc in 4.2 so we're gonna download this one and ta-da now we have the updated blender 4.2 lts now apparently so let's take a look at some of those new vsc features so we've got blender 4.2 lts this is developer.blender.org docs release notes 4.2 with all the slashes and stuff, of course. And if we scroll down, we do have a video sequencer section, so let's jump right there. And ooh, right away, I like how they lay all of this out. It kind of uh, categorize it here a little bit better. So we've got performance starting at first, so reduced stalls when new movie clips start playing. Oh, okay, right away, I'm already loving this because this was one of my main issues from before. So when you start playing, actually, let's pull up a 4.1 version. All right, so I've got a VSC setup here with a video and proxy. We're just concerned about the cache here. And this video I just recorded just a few minutes ago. It's for my membership on my website. You can check it out if you want blenderfrenzy.com. But the actual video is about the new chapter that I just added to the Blendinator, which is my new course, still early access. Also check that out if you want early access. It's almost finished. When it's finished, it goes to full price. There you go, quick plug there. But this is, uh, you can see the cache here. If I cache this in, then this will be smooth. So I just made a cut that uh, had a lot more space here. So just cut that right there. And maybe I'm gonna start here. We're gonna refresh and I'll play it. And you can see that this cache right here doesn't load. It's like right at that cut or the frame right after it. And sometimes that makes it jitter. And a lot of times if you, we just start adding cuts here, I'm just gonna, we're just gonna mute because I don't actually care about the sound right now. But every time it goes past one of these cuts, it just stops and stutters. So here, I think it's talking about this, reduced stalls when new movie clips start playing. I don't know if that's completely new clips or if you cut it, it's, if it's considered a new clip. I don't know what they're, they mean by that necessarily. We can maybe check this out. Okay, yeah, I think during playback, some of the slow frames, camera cuts, this saves 10 to 20 milliseconds. Okay, that's cool. You know, better performance is always good. Reduce the amount of temporary image clears when rendering VSC effect stack. Okay, a lot of developer speak here, but just know it's more efficient now. And I'm sorry, I'm not a developer, but I am very happy that the developers are continuing work on the sequencer. Please, please, please keep it up. I love the VSC and I will continue to use that for my video editing. The VSC already had an optimization where alpha where an alpha and overstrip that is known to be fully opaque covers the whole screen and stops the processing of all strips below it, since they would not be visible anyway. Now the same optimization happens for some cases of strips that do not cover the whole screen. When a fully opaque strip completely covers some strip that is under it, the lower strip is not evaluated or rendered. Okay, interesting. So good, lots of performance stuff, that's good. And now onto the user interface, which is going to be the biggest change it looks like. So the strips in the timeline received a visual overhaul. Absolutely, it looks like it. So I'm excited to see this. Rounded corners to better tell where a strip ends and begins. Okay, that's right, so they're right next to each other. Thicker outline for active or selected strips, okay. I didn't really ever have a problem with that, but the theme, the strip colors have been updated to prove, improve readability. Okay, here's a screenshot of these here. Strips with missing media files are displayed with a red tint and an icon overlaying the VSC timeline. Oh, this is absolutely wonderful. I really like that. I didn't even think about something like this, but this is very useful just visually to see where you have missing files and stuff instead of having to click on each one of them and then see if 
there's a file. So yes, absolutely, this is great. Okay, so I've uploaded the same thing in Blender 4.2. Uh, first thing I noticed, a couple first things, actually it looks like the cache is right up here instead of down here and it's a different color. And it's on by default, which I like, but my shortcut keys I'm gonna have to change because I usually have my right mouse button to scrub the timeline cursor and now I can't do that, so I have to just click and drag up here. But it looks like it's working just fine. Let's go here, let's see if my other shortcut keys are gone too. Okay, no, that's good. So S to snap, which I think by default is shift S. But anyway, so let's make some cuts here. Oh, let's see, strip preview. Is it still the same thing? Oh yeah, waveforms. Let me just click those on. And then it has to calculate the strip previews. Okay, so that looks different. Wow, okay, I see. So uh, the waveform looks like it's half. It's just the half of the waveform, which I don't know if I like to be honest. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to see if I can make some cuts here. Okay, my other keyboard shortcuts seem to be doing all right. So here, this is another thing that's changed. So this is the um, timeline strip. So there's no handles here anymore, uh, which I, I'm, I'm, I really like, but you can still drag them like there were handles. And I like that too. But with the handles, it was kind of hard to see, especially with sound where the waveform is, where I needed to cut right at a certain point the handles kind of covered that up. And so the tweaking of handles was streamlined. Unselected handles are not drawn, but the mouse cursor will change just like we saw. Adjoined handles can be selected with one click. Yeah, that I like too. So you have the double right here, I think. Well, that's not working. So double, oh, so that's not working. So you can see double, this should slide both of those, right? Maybe it's because I don't have them selected. Maybe they both have to be selected. No, nope, that's not working. Well, I think that's a bug. Either that or I don't know how it actually works. Adjoined handles can be selected with one click. Ha, psych! After moving unselected handle, the handle will be deselected. Okay. This behavior can be disabled in preferences, editing, video sequencer, tweak handles. Editing, video sequencer, tweak handles. Okay. Let's, uh, let's see. Does that help? Okay. Let's see. Does that... Oh, it just brings back the, the old the old version there. Man, I really do want the that to be, because I, I mean, you could you can grab them like this, press if you select all of them and press G. So that's that's I what I would assume was supposed to happen, but it is not with, at least with my setup here. I wonder if it has to do with my shortcut keys. Hold on, key map. Okay, we'll just do blender, just blender here. Let's try that. Turn these back on and let's try that. Okay. Ah, okay. So uh, something with my shortcut keys, which I'm going to have to revamp everything. I'm glad I waited to tell 4.2, the long-term support release, to think about this because I don't want to keep changing my shortcut keys, but I haven't been changing them for a while. I think since before 2.8, actually. <laughs> I think it was 2.7 that I had did the shortcut key the key maps uh, adding my own key map so let's um let's see can we do i wonder i know why i think because i had by default when i selected one of these it would select its corresponding audio or actually any strips that were the same exact length it would select automatically and probably with both of these selected yeah so it would just deselect that so I don't know if this is going to be too helpful for me. I Well, maybe it will be if you're just wanting to move one or the other to create like an F frame or an L frame. You can easily manipulate that, which I like. But if both of them are selected, I can't. Doesn't look like I can do it. Oh, wait. No, that's wrong. Oh, I did it. I had it. Wait, hold on. Is it in the middle? Can I do it in the middle? How did I do that? I don't know. But at least it does seem to work with a single strip. Okay, just in from the future here, and as I was editing the video in the new 4.2, I appended a scene from an older file, and you can see the missing files, and it will even show in the meta strip, which is really nice. So if I tab in here and go find which one is missing here, uh, looks like this one, this red, um, whatever that is. Oh, I might have had a little PNG up here, a little motion graphic or whatever. Let's see what else. Uh, we've got... 
these two here are the swoosh. So these are audio for the my Portal series, where Portal Embers, I have a swoosh sound, which I <laughs> I think I just made with my voice. But we can come up here and see what the source, what it's supposed to be. So it's supposed to be in this file, but it can't find this. And I think it's because I deleted it from my computer because it's a pretty old file. Uh, I don't actually need to use this, I think, anyway. Um, or actually, maybe I do because um, I have... Oh, this is just fading from one to the other. Hmm. Because I, I was using the... Yeah. The, oh, yeah, the fire swish here. Ooh, oh, it has some... There we go. Yep. Okay. Yep. So we got a fire swish. And I think that's what's also missing here. Yep, a swish. But anyway, it's nice that you can see those like right away. I can see anything that's missing here. And then even if it's in, in a meta strip, I can see it. So that's kudos to the development team for the VSE. Thank you so much, Blender and the Blender team for all you do. Overlays, new cache line overlay previously available only when using developer extras. Yes, so that is on the top. I believe that's what we saw. Uh, is there a... Now this is all just code, no screenshot, but I'm pretty sure that's what this is up here. See the darker purple line is the uncached, and then we play that, and then the lighter purple is the cache. This is actually consistent with the motion tracking. Uh, so if we go to VFX motion tracking, when we load in a clip here, down here, this was there was a purple bar just like that for the cache. So actually, that's really nice, although it is on the top, which is strange. I think it's because it's right next to the um, timeline where you see the time and the frames. So I'm just control T to toggle back and forth between those. So everything that's cached in uh, will play a lot quicker. And you can also probably um, guessing prefetch frames. If you click this one, it'll start to cache in all of that automatically and see how it stops over that cut. That's kind of what I was talking about earlier, but uh, once it's cached over, we shouldn't have any problems with it smoothly going over that cut, even if I wasn't using a proxy. So that is what the prefetch frames does. Okay, more overlays. Waveforms are now displayed as half size by default for space efficiency. Um, yeah, I don't like that. I wonder if I can change that. Display more detail at small sizes. Okay, well I'll have to, I'll have to see. I'll have to see if. That's helpful and if I can get used to it. Next overlay, the popover has been organized for clarity. What is this? Didn't they used to have like screenshots of all of these? So I could look and see what they're talking about. So it's just talking about some sort of pop-up, but I don't know what popover. Is that is that the is that this? Doesn't look like that's been reorganized. Hmm. Okay. Maybe someone knows what that is and can Put it in the comments. Okay, next one, preview. Separate colors option for Luma waveform was replaced by RGB parade scope. Parade, parade, parade? I don't know. I haven't really used the Luma waveform all that much, so I probably won't recognize any sort of difference there. Text strips, okay, this is also one of my favorites that I saw. New options for text shadow placement and blur level, as well as a text outline, which is like one of the most basic things for text, and this is what a lot of people have been requesting. Um, I want to try this. New text in 4.2. Okay, let's uh, add a different text. Let's see, what do we want here? Uh, let's do this one here. Okay, first thing, let's do a box. All right, and let's pull it up. Let's pull the alpha all the way up. And we'll do like a blue box here. Let's go to 100%, I wanna see that. New text in 4.2, yay. Okay, I am curious about the outline. Ooh, outline width, oh, look at that. Oh, oh, that's so cool, so cool. And of course you can change the color of that as well. Bring the alpha all the way up there. And then we can do something like an orange. Yeah. Ta -da. Or what maybe is even better is if we change the text to a blue color and then just have a white background. And this may be better if we just hide these. Yeah. Uh, we have the shadow. I'm going to get rid of that. Let's do the shadow and the shadow angle. Hide those. 
Okay, so we've got our shadow. Let's just move this up here. Uh, we have a blur on that shadow. Oh, yes. That's so cool. Shadow offset. Look at that. I think, to be fair, I think the shadow offset was there before, maybe. But the angle was not. We can now change the angle to be on any side of that text, which is super, super awesome. Of course, we can change the color also of the shadow there. Oh, so much more powerful. So many hacks that I've done before that we can do away with and we can just click these buttons and slide these sliders to get exactly the look we're going for. Here's another thing that I want to test out. Multiple files from external file browser can be added at once using drag and drop. This was one of the main reasons I never used the file browser. Okay, so here's some of my thumbnails for my course. So I'm just gonna select a random number and then click and drag and pull those in. And let's see what that looks like. Do we get all of those? Yes, we did. Awesome. So what would happen normally is if I did this, it would only drag in one of these images, whichever one was the active selection, I guess. So that is cool. I wanna try it with some videos though. Here are all the course videos for the Blendinator. I'm just gonna drag in just a few of these. Let's just do three. Drag in that there. And do all three of them come in? Yes, they do. And you can tell very easily with the new look. Okay, I'm just going to delete those. Okay, now I want to try it in the internal browser here. Okay, same thing. Let's see, I'm just going to take these. Well, let's just do these three and drag those in. Okay, so it doesn't look like it's working with the internal browser, which, eh. I don't know. I don't know if I'm just not doing something right. So these two, oh, come on. Let's do something small so I can see. This one and then maybe this one. Okay, nope. Press, press shift, control, alt, nope. It's just bringing that one in. And that's why I still am not going to use the internal browser. New operator in the view menu, frame scene range. This changes the horizontal view to match the scene range. If preview range is active, the operator will be relabeled as frame preview range and zoom to that instead. This was added to the dope sheet timeline, graph editor, NLA editor, and video sequence editor. For the VSC, this operator is quite similar to the frame all. So isn't that like pressing home? View, frame all. Yeah, home, frame scene range. Oh, okay. But if you have stuff outside of the frame, okay, hold on. So if I press home, that's gonna frame everything. So every single strip that we have, whether regardless if it's in the frame range. But then if we do view frame scene range, then it will just have the range from one to 2116, the end frame here. And so if we also just make this, you know, like something like 600, and then we do that, it's gonna uh, frame scene range. Yes, perfect. Okay, that's actually really useful. I really like that because I've wanted to do that many a time. But uh, I've always just done the Shift B, which is the zoom. You can just do that. So that's kind of how I've done that. You could probably set this as if I right click and do Add to Quick Favorites, then I can just press Q, frame scene range. Pretty easy. I like that. Video AVI RAW and AVI JPEG movie file output types are removed. That's fine, I never use them. Existing scenes using them will be updated to FFmpeg video uh, with the default options for H.264, which was the best anyway. The, the default H.264 in Blender was phenomenal, it was great. Or it is, I should say, it is great. Um, so I'm okay with that. Um, sorry to all those who were using these. Redundant time code types were removed. Record run and record run no gaps are kept. Okay, apparently there used to be five options for the time codes and three of them were exactly the same. So they just combined those. Well, alrighty, I am excited. I'm actually really excited that the 4.2 version is the long-term support release version, even though it was early. Uh, I was thinking I was having a little bit more time before that happened. So I will have to switch over to 4.2 and start video editing with this now. And actually, I'll probably do another live stream soon because I've got a lot of video to edit left for my course before it goes uh, full uh, full fledged course instead of the early access. So maybe I'll do another live stream where I edit one of those videos and you can kind of see my process. I know a lot of you like that. But until then, happy editing and you will see me in the next one.